In this unit, we are going to learn how to manually calibrate a HEC HMS model. In order to finish this unit, you need to have a HEC HMS model with observed hydrograph. And this is something we have done earlier in module 7. So what I have done is I have just copied that folder that has the Cedar Creek model. So a folder with Cedar Creek model will have all these files and folders. So once you copy that, you should be able to start. And even if you don't have it, it is provided with this unit. So you should be able to download and copy it in your folder. I have named this folder as HMS underscore manual because in another unit we are going to learn how to calibrate a HEC HMS model using the optimization option in HEC HMS. So once you have this HEC HMS model, so go ahead and open HEC HMS. And this will open the interface. So we are going to go to file and open that Cedar Creek project. So you go to browse. So in my case, it is in C class HMS manual Cedar Creek. And this is our Cedar Creek dot HMS project selected. We have already run this model earlier and also compared the model output with observed hydrograph. So if you go to results, you should see run one. If you don't see run one, you can go to compute, pick run one and run the simulation with this button. So this is the simulation button. So close and then you will go to sync, which is the outlet and look at the graph. So you can see that the blue line is the model output and the black dots that you see here is the observed hydrograph. So in calibration, what we try to do is we try to match this blue model output hydrograph with the observed hydrograph. So in order to calibrate the model, we should also know how some of the parameters impact the hydrograph shape. So if you remember, we use the SCS curve number method for computing loss and we use the SCS unit hydrograph method for transforming runoff into hydrograph and then we use the Muskingum method for routing. So you can see that our model peak is very high compared to the observed hydrograph and then we can see our peak is happening earlier than the observed peak. So we have to shift the peak. We also have to reduce the peak. And then you can see there is a lot of volume difference between the observed hydrograph and the model hydrograph towards the tail end. So we can work to fix that too. So we know that the curve number affects the hydrograph peak. So one initial iteration you can do is you can reduce the curve number and see how this impacts the hydrograph shape. So in manual calibration, you have to change everything manually. So what we are going to do is we are going to click on components, pick the basin model that we want to calibrate, and then we go to parameters, loss, and SCS curve number. So this is our initial curve number that we used to create our first simulation. So what we are going to do is we are going to reduce this curve number to bring that peak down. So what you can do in order to retain your original values, one way to do that is you can write this down manually somewhere or you can create an Excel sheet. So I'm going to copy this, Control C or right click copy and open an empty Excel file. I named this file as manual calibration and here I'll just create my curve number values. So this is my initial value. So in order to bring this down, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to reduce it by 10%. So I can say 0 0.9 times the initial value. And then you just 
do that for all the sub basins. So then I copy this, select Control C or right click copy, go back and simply paste it here and say apply using this button and then run the simulation again and then we go back to results look at the graph so you can see that the peak did come down a little bit if you want you can just play with curve number to bring this peak up to here but we also know that lag time affects the peak in terms of the magnitude and also the position so instead of just playing with the curve number we can also try changing the lag time in order to bring this peak down and also shift this peak little later so if we increase the lag time the peak will go down and hopefully this will shift towards where the observed peak is so in our next iteration let's go ahead and change the lag time so to change the lag time you will go to components here for basin 1 parameters transform SCS unit hydrograph and these are our initial values so we will copy them select copy and then go to Excel and we will create our lag time series here and paste so we are going to increase the lag time for our second iteration so let's increase by 10%, 20%, pick your number. So I'm going to try 20%. So equal to 1.2 times the initial value and do this for all. And then copy these new values, control C, and then we will paste it here. Control V, apply, close, and run the simulation again and you can see the peak came down a little more and hopefully it also shifted towards the observed peak so that is another parameter that we can play around the third parameter that we can play around is related to routing so we will go to routing muskingum so we can change k values so this will affect the shape of the hydrograph also so our initial value is 0.5 let's try to make it two or one whichever so this is a trial and error iterative process subjective process so depending on which parameter value you pick and how many parameters you pick you will get different results and many of us may get similar output with different parameter values so we change k to two apply close and run again and now you can see the peak came down significantly now if you want you can increase the k value to one bring the peak little bit up and you may even have to go back to curve number and lag time and adjust that depending on your new k values so let's go back and also look at how we can change x so go to parameters routing muskingum so right now it is 0.25 so what if i make it 0.1 i'm not doing this in excel because we have only few values so it is easier to do it here apply close and run again and you can see it has subtle effect but not as significant as we saw with k lag time and curve number so in manual calibration you have to repeat this process iteratively sometimes changing curve number sometimes changing lag time sometimes changing muskingum k and x to match the observed hydrograph with the simulated hydrograph so right now we are just doing a visual comparison but eventually as you get closer to observed hydrograph with your model simulation 
you can also look at other results such as summary how is the peak discharge matching how is the volume matching for observed and computed hydrograph you can see the root mean square error nash sutliff so this should come close to one as these two hydrographs come together so all you have to do is just repeat this process until you get satisfactory output so just keep working on it iteratively until you get satisfactory results and i just want to show you the kind of improvement that you can expect from this manual calibration so this is the output that i got after say 10 iterations of changing curve number lag time Muskingum K and X. Uh, so you can see the peak and the peak time are matching okay. Even the shape looks good. This is a little bit mismatched, but if you spend more time, you should also be able to do that. And if I look at the summary table, you can see my Nash set leaf is 0 0.7, which is pretty good. So our goal is to bring it as close to 1 and you saw in our first iteration this was negative so if you spend some time and understand how the hydrograph is changing as you change parameter values you should be able to get a reasonably good manual calibration with heck hms so i'm not going to tell you what parameters i used to get this uh, simulated output but you are welcome to play with the parameter values and figure it out by yourself so this is it for this unit